You mentioned Lloyd Blankfein. That was a fabulous interview. You got him to talk about tweeting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Lloyd is, uh, he's done with letting the firm be characterized by others. Uh, he wants it to be characterized by himself. Three of six, by the way, have been somewhat critical of the president. He said, look, I reflect the, I want to defend the institution. Now, I mean, I've known Lloyd for, uh, for, for 30, let's see, 1983. Um, I don't know, 34 years. Wow. And uh, Lloyd is a guy who, uh, represents to me a lot. I mean, I, I just play with an open hand. I mean, I've known him for a long time. He was very helpful for me in my career. He's always very kind to me. And it's very hard to say anything other than good, good works because they came through the Great Recession well. And, but he did say something very interesting. He said, if you came through it well, that means you must have done bad. And he doesn't want that to be that kind of defining thing. He also explained once again how people are supposed to be committed to public service as part of their job. Now, you could say even that is cynical. It's like, oh, of course, that's to be able to join boards and meet wealthy people and get and then get their business. Now, is it a virtuous circle? I mean, here's what I say. I, I, I could have made more money had I not had to go do you know, go to community service. I, uh, you could have, I mean, but that's, you know, that's short-term greedy. That's not the way he thinks. Also, I mean, let me point out that there are people who do revolving door. Like they go work for their company, then they go to government, they learn things, and then they go back to the government, go back to their firm, and uh, really uh, profit off what they learn from the government. And that's pretty venal. Um, the people I work with at Goldman, who then went, subsequently went on, did not go back. It was like, I did my time, I made my money, and now I'm gonna go do the great things. And that was really another lesson that I learned at the firm, which is that, you know, you can make enough money, and once you've made enough money, why don't you go do something good? Now, somehow, that's been interpreted as being Goldman having these uh, octopus tentacles everywhere. But what it really was, was the ethos. The ethos was you made a lot of money, go do something for the government, go do something good for the world. And a vast majority of my friends who retire from Goldman, and many of them have because they did very did well, are doing these great things. Uh, building schools or working on the environment or helping certain charities full time or or, or or doing things that are great for themselves but also great for humanity or helping particular causes. I could go over and over and over the number of people at Goldman who are working at, who work at Goldman when I was there who are now doing these great charities or they're working in government, Mnuchin or mm. oh, you know, obviously Gary Cohn is a, who was a friend and I was joking with Lloyd, it's like you know you want to have, I mean I know Gary pretty well and you have to call Mr. Cohn or you know whatever you, and I don't like to pretend because uh, I'm not a, you know I'm a guy who was a business guy who came into journalism and it's hard for me to act as if I don't know who Gary Cohn is when I was at his birthday party last year <laughs> it's hard for me to say I don't know Lloyd when Lloyd was the only person who was nice to me for the first six months that I was at Goldman I mean you remember this stuff and and, and so it's a little more problematic for me to assert myself. Uh, now I do it. I want to do what's right for the viewers. I always want to do. So I asked, you know, I asked the question about whether the, you know, they were fined. I mean, what was that all about? Right. I asked the question, wouldn't they do better without the Volcker rule? I do my job, but I also do my job within the confines of being conversational, not trying to play gotcha, because I just don't think there's a gotcha there. And Jim, you have another big interview coming up tonight on Mad Money with the CEO of IBM. Yeah, Ginny Rometty is a person who I think has tried mightily to get IBM to be far more analytical, far more cognitive. That's what the Watson stand, stands for, uh, artificial intelligence. All the things that we hear about from the great people uh, in tech right now, whether it be uh, Jeff Bezos, whether it be Mark Benioff, uh, whether it be the people who run Google, or people who run Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg. The issue here is they've got a big legacy business. And how do you... Uh, deal with that legacy business which hurts your gross margins and is dropping off and at the same time be able to make uh, enough money on the cognitive businesses on the you know these special businesses that are growing fast and also how do we deal with the Warren Buffett issue that he decided that he didn't want to be as big although he still owns a lot how do we how does Ginny Romani deal frankly I'm gonna ask her there's so few women it, who are CEOs and, you know that's uh, like my kids I have two daughters and they're saying dad you never have women on. And I say, no, I do have women on. I try to have as many women on as possible. It's just that there's not many women CEOs. And, and my daughters don't understand that at all. They say, well, Dad, you just better get them all. And, and <laughs> I, I'm fortunate enough to have Ginny Rometty, but I'm also always thinking in the back of my mind that my two daughters are saying, Dad, what is it about women that you won't put them on? And I have to explain the real situation. All right, that's tonight, 6 p.m. Eastern on CNBC.